this is retro pc user today we're going to be talking about this motherboard this is a jetway uh, 386 hybrid motherboard um it supports either a 386 processor uh variants like i'm uh the standard 386dx um uh, processor is 20 like 25 megahertz possibly possibly also 16 but it's hard to determine because there's little to no documentation about like setting the clock speed and stuff like that on here but there are jumpers um listed on here for cpu speed well actually it's only the vl bus In any event, um, so yeah, this computer had this motherboard, um, had this processor on it, a Cyrix.
Sorry about that. Couldn't find the thing to disable the camera. I hot. Everything it came with was this Intel i3A7DX. Mathco. Which works between 16 and 33 megahertz. So it's actually a pretty good chip right there. You can have like, it works in different speeds, 16 megahertz, um, 25 and 33. Unfortunately, it doesn't go up to 40 because, well, um, the uh, 486 was invented at that time period. Here's the BIOS chip. I don't know if you can read that or not. It says AMA. Mayor Megan Trevins, BIOS 4060X, ISA BIOS, AB1406105. So that's when it was manufactured, say around June 6, 1992. Unfortunately, I don't know if you can see that, look at all that car that's on there. So much corrosion, it's so much. Dunk on those pins there look but um I actually did look up and see if there was a way I can actually fix that I can probably I can get some solder like scrape off this card get some solder and then I'm uh reflow and then remove let's see uh, I can't remember what it's called I mean, some of these pins don't even look that bad like, only, looks like three or four of them are affected, but other than that, they, the rest of them are, don't look that bad at all. That's surprising. I've seen worse BIOS chips, and I believe this one is probably like uh, 64K at kilobytes, or 256 some, uh, kilobits. If it's some uh, one-time programming, uh, EPROM, EPROM, it's like, which cannot be erased, so to speak. Um, okay, so here's the heavy corrosion right here on the IC for the uh, uh, BIOS chip. There's another chip that's right over here. I believe that's the RTC chip. I can't read those numbers very well. Those are it's heavily corroded. Yeah, it says U2. Not the band, mind you. Now, U2 is a really good band. I gotta tell you. <clears throat> now, if you guys want to see something horrible, here's the battery. Yeah, it's it's spewed on one end. Well, actually, it's spewed on both ends. Now, if you look at the memory slots here, not too bad at all. the The corrosion stopped right here, so it's from a couple of these legs on the pars on the pars on the par connector. I mean, just only the back end that's bad, but on the front end doesn't look too terrible. The keyboard port, so from here, and then down to this um, first 8-bit ISA slot, or XC slot, excuse me, over here, there's a lot, um, let's see, there's some over here. Um, fortunately, there's an external bayer connector right there. So the initial plan is to soak this, you know, put some baking soda, sprinkle it on top of the affected areas, and then I'm, uh, and then use vinegar to soak these off here, see if that fixes it. Um, I did order, um, the 20... 
and PDIP uh, sockets for the uh, IC sockets for the BIOS chip. Some EEPROM, one time programming, 45 nanosecond um, rated speed. Um, memory chips of the same size 256 kilobits or 64k kilobytes times 8 bits at, at bytes at bits per byte. Actually, yeah, some of these don't even look that bad at all for for this. So it looks like it stopped right over, yeah. And this slot here, I got a brand new one of these coming in as well. I just ordered them just recently today. I was thinking about getting another keyboard connector, but um, it doesn't look too terrible. The pins itself on the inside don't look bad. But it's the shield itself that's bad, so I might as well find a replacement. Clean all this crud that's from the battery spoo over here as well. And there are a couple other spots as well that, brought, that just brought to my attention when I was looking at it, thankfully. There's one pin right there in the jumper, JP35. Um, that needs to be um, cleaned up as well, possibly get a replacement one too. Um, and a couple of these right here, well actually it's just only the one that's right there, I don't know if you can see it or not, but that's bad. I don't think it seeped all the way through, it's just only on this top portion right here, so I might as well get some, like I said, baking soda and spray some vinegar on there. Everything else on here is actually pretty staggering. It doesn't look too terrible. It doesn't look like it's um, uh, affected by any of the corrosion either. And as I stated before, the RAM slots are actually in pretty tip top shape. I don't see any signs of corrosion on here. So it's a good sign. The power ones, the back end right here, just has a little bit. Um, but it doesn't look that bad. And then there's just. A tiny, tiny ones right over here. Like, okay, so it's these three right here. They need to be cleaned off. The rest of them are actually pretty good shape for a hold this board is and how much damage it took. Um, now the other side, I'm going to show you. It's horrible. Feast your eyes. And I thought these green capacitors right here. I actually thought that was actually part of the corrosion. Turns out that's just the actual color of the capacitors, green. I, I did not realize that they made green and mud tantalum capacitors back then. Looks like it's a free slide on my, or clean off that on my resistor pack right there. I can just like desolder it, clean it, do the same thing for this, and then this chip right here. Um. Now, I was thinking about putting that in a socket, but I don't think that's going to be a good idea because, one, um, there's not going to be enough clearance to install the uh, uh, BIOS chip on here. And two, I don't think it's going to be possible, though, but... Anyway, I'm just trying to get some of that marking cut out for there. I can't read those markers. Once I take a picture of it, I'll probably get a better one. But the back side of the board here, um, let's say 99% of it is actually pretty good. This right here, where the, uh, okay, so these five pins right here, the keyboard pin out, and these two are just the ground, so it's not that bad, but might as well just, like, Remove the corrosion off there, reflow the solder, that sort of thing. And then there's these traces right here. They're really bad. But fortunately, I have plenty of 30 gauge wire. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go clean the top end first. That's the top priority right now. And then do this bottom section here. Um, 
reflow, like remove any solder that's on there, and then reflow it, the whole thing. Um, and repair the traces that need it most. I wouldn't be surprised if those things, still, if the ones that have corrosion right here, still have continuity. But I don't take chances with that. As I say, if you see corrosion on there, even though if it makes continuity, um, a lot of people are like, oh, it's still good. Um, oftentimes, it will fail if it's not patched. Like if you don't use 30 gauge wire, for example, um, to patch it. Which is rather unfortunate that a lot of people forget to do that. But for me, I just patch it. I see air leakage. I, I this actually this board is actually um uh, not that bad compared to the uh, the one motherboard that I got uh forty six motherboard that I got last year. They had so much corrosion on there; it was beyond repair. Literally beyond repair. Like the my bio chip was not salvageable. Nothing on those, nothing on that board was completely salvageable. It was a mess. And then I got a Soyo for saw two motherboard that I saw in my other stream. Um, only three traces were affected by the uh, corrosion uh, from the leaking battery. But fortunately, fortunately, that board works. I just had to. Um, patch those three traces. I just had to trim a little bit off the, uh, the top of the tracer that exposed the copper. And then the other spot, and then just ran some wire just through those spots, and it still works to this day, pretty much. Kind of, sort of, maybe almost not really because of uh, I'm trying to think here. The um, uh, the BIOS. Um, uh, bin that I put in there, the, um, uh, the beta version of it was not working at all. Then, I got another motherboard, well, a $10 386 computer that's over there. Um, that one had, uh, that one started, no, that battery started to leak. And only one trace, one freaking trace, had corrosion. The board did not suffer from any other damage. Which was rather fortunate because, well, 10 bucks well spent, huh? <laughs> of course, I patched that too. I put a better BIOS on it. And to make things better, I'm not sure I didn't calculate that wrong for the BIOS trip. Let's see. Hang on. Um, if I had a calculator on me right now. Oh shoot, it's supposed to be 512 kilobits, not. <laughs> not the other way around. Whoops! <laughs> okay, silly me. Um. Because apparently I was supposed to order, um, 512 kilobit, not. But 256 kilobit. So I forgot 256 kilobit is basically like 32 kilobytes times 8, not 64 times 8. 64 times 8 is 512. I got my math totally wrong. Hey, that's alright if we make mistakes. It happens. And it's alright. Even I'm, uh, my one friend, um, she did say that I'm like, look, it, it doesn't matter if you make mistakes, you're still a good person. I totally agree with it. Um, okay, so for those who are just tuning in, or if you're just tuning in, I was just talking about this Jetway motherboard. This is just an overview. Um, there's some little bit of corrosion, like three of these um, power pins right here. You have a little bit of corrosion on here, so I can try to tackle that off of there. See if we can get that to work. If not, I can just like buy another um, power connector um, or salvage one from a non working board and it's like um, swap it around and everything. 
Actually, anyway, I do have an on working board. I do have the, I still have that Packard Bell motherboard that I might have lost all the video memory. Um, in any event, when I was doing some Google searches and everything, apparently this is a 512 kilobit um, uh, APROM one time programming chip, or 256 kilobit <laughs> on accident. I may have a couple of 64, uh, a couple of 200, 512 kilobits somewhere. This is the AMI BIOS uh, version uh, from. 1992 so that is just the pre lba and fortunately this thing has an opti for a2c 495x sx um so theoretically i can't upgrade the bios to the um mr bios um there's one piece of corrosion right here and this one pin right there it's too dark to tell i'm sorry then there's one leg right here on this um, jumper header that also has a little bit of corrosion. Over here, there's like a lot of corrosion right here. Doesn't look that bad right over here, but it's still horrible. This IC right here. This keyboard uh, grounding plate. Seen better days from corrosion. But uh, the connectors on the inside are actually pretty, pretty good still. So it's a good thing. Um, the bottom end here. Um, the traces need to be patched with wire, uh, with 30 gauge wire, which fortunately I have. So what I'm just going to do is I'm going to go follow. The, I'm going to go from these spots right here that these traces go to, and then follow it, and then go all the way down to the exact spots where they're supposed to be at. So that's just the overview of the board. It takes any processor from, I believe, from 60 megahertz all the way up to um, maybe 33 or 66 megahertz. It just depends on the clock speed. Um, let's see here. I was looking at seeing which. Okay, so this thing supports up to 256 kilobytes of level 2 cache. Which are, let's see, there's two banks right here, and then these, uh, I think this is a tag one. I'm not sure what this one does. I think that one's also a tag, but, um, yeah, I think that's probably for the, uh, like, if you wanted to get the full 256, so I think this one has, like, 128 or 64 kilobytes install of level 2 cache, so that's not bad for... This particular computer. Let's see, there's our 256 kilobytes, so 32k, 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 32k. Let's see, so 128, 256. I think this is at 256. So it's actually pretty good for. It supports either 46DX, 46SX, or a 386. Presser. Um, it has it had the uh, Cyrix CX forty six DLC um, twenty five in it. It's actually the lowest speed Cyrix forty six DLC that I have now in my collection. This is the D three seven DX and I'm gonna go from sixteen to thirty three megahertz, which is pretty good. And there's these all these memory chips. It's like a lot of these. I not sure how much memory these are. I think this is like one megabyte per thing, so it's probably like eight megabytes worth of memory, which is actually a win-win situation. It's got three VLB slots, six um, 16-bit ISA slots, two 8-bit XT slots. This one here is going to get replaced. This IC is going to get replaced. This chip, I might have to find a replacement. Actually, it wouldn't hurt to get, actually get replacement of this one, especially this uh, battery header right here, a couple of these here. Um, so it wouldn't hurt to replace those, but uh, this right here, there is just a little bit of corrosion. And there's just only one leg that has corrosion for that 
um, three a uh, forty six presser. Um, sorry, but it's not too terrible. And like I said, the underside it was not really good either. So uh, let's see, thirteen and fifteen. Where it is thirteen and fifteen on this thing? Let's see here, JP ten. Is set to two three. Eleven is set to close. Where is twelve and thirteen? And I can't see a thing. They're supposed to be twelve and thirteen, but I can't see twelve and thirteen. It's somewhere over in Jersey. I can tell you that. <laughs> Where is 12 and 13 on here? Okay, so 12 and 13 is somewhere. I'm sorry, 13 and 15. 